So hello, everybody. So it's a short update on G1. G1 stands for green one. Don't ask me why. Except, except that this might, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, it, uh, it, there is a latency between yeah. uh, <laughs> there is some lag. It's green because on this figure, which is the the mother of all figures, let's say, uh, the, this area is green. And what we are interested in here is execution. Uh, and so uh, there might be two things in this part, or may maybe more things. One is uh, having parallel execution of actors. That's one thing. And another thing that Marco was mentioning yesterday would be these arbitrary computations over IPFS, uh, the Bacalao or the code project, depending uh, uh, the name you want to give it. So we have two milestones in this green one area. Milestone one that was uh, due to January 15th is a review of the parallelization uh, techniques for WASM uh, virtual machines, was their order execute models, let's say, and a second milestone from mid-January to mid-July, which is designing uh, a first parallelization architecture for these uh, WASM-based systems. Before we continue, uh, let's say that the parallelization of WASM order execute models became the parallelization of smart contract execution. Why? Just because, I mean, WASM is not that used it's some i mean it, it's used but not within the context of smart contracts and if you are looking for research papers discussing the parallelization of wasm you won't just get anything okay Ros uh, i mean uh, this is not the case of smart contracts are you following the proposals for the wasm standard around parallelization and, and no no, no I, I i won't discuss I will see, you will see what I'm going to discuss, but I won't discuss uh, the WASM VM design or oh whatever. Okay. I will discuss at a much higher level how do. I, I was wondering how we're no, 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 no. exploring this because there's no, 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 no. But, but, but I've, I've played a bit with WASM to understand how it is, okay. and there is indeed uh, something. There is, the, there is something, so yes, something. close to P threads and so on yes. that uh, yes. I, I use that, and, and actually it works. But it, it, it's not, from what I understood, it's not in the core. WASM specification, it's something that sits just, be, I mean, next to the specification, but that can be integrated within WASM VM and so on. But at the time I, I looked at WASM VM, the choice had not yet been made by the field team, and they were considering different uh, WASM uh, engines. One was WASMer, uh, the other one was uh, e EVM or EWASM, EWASM. There, there were a uh, third one, I don't remember which one. Question. So the wasm, the big advantage of that could be that the computation is like deterministic, could, can be made. So w w w the choice of wasm is because I think wasm is a standard that will be widely deployed. Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of, let's say, a higher level language that they want to rely on, and then they will compile this uh, higher level language into uh, actors. Or and, and they might also compile other languages into WASM, like VM to WASM, uh, EVM to WASM, uh, I mean, Solidity to WASM, and so on and so on. So it's mostly, mostly because of this portability, or mostly because it can, it can be made very easily? I, I think it's because it's popular. Portability, portability so po it's popular. Yeah. The goal behind WASM is what the JVM wanted to be a few years ago, which yeah. is a universal bytecode. Yeah. But in this case, it compiles to machine code. So That, that's great, but what this, so this is what we want to escape, actually. This yeah, is what so so there are, there's a subset of WASM that you can make it deterministic because like, the, it's really well specified and really simple, the subset of, mm -hmm. of uh, commands, like operands in the, in the bytecode. But there are caveats going to the architecture. But yeah, like, that's also a thing, but the main thing is portability. Okay. And mm -hmm. like, in JVM, you have to have like, this huge stack and like, more overhead and so on, and this is mostly because it compiles directly to or interpret directly into machine code. Okay. But, but the thing, one, I mean, one of the difficulties we, we have so far is that in parallel of what we are doing, the engineering team is 
defining the next architecture. The, the, the architecture is not defined yet. Now it might be. But at the time we started uh, thinking about that, you know, there were several designs that were possible, like multiple uh, uh, WASM VMs or a single uh, WASM VM that would be uh, uh, parallelized or and so on and so on. So and this was not uh, fixed yet. So we will, but this is something we will work on. This will be part of the, of the second uh, milestone. Okay, now we will know what they do in a VM. So Filecoin VM and this, I mean, we will use their design and we will base our work on, on their design. So, but so far uh, there is no, no nothing related to them that I will discuss. So what do we want to do actually? So we want to parallelize smart contract execution. So let's assume that you have a block, so you have two transactions and they are linked uh, within the block. Uh, as you were saying, what is very uh, uh, convenient is to have this uh, deterministic execution and, and sequential execution one at a time. This is actually what most blockchains uh, provide today. So transaction one will be executed before transaction two. So if they perform actions on a smart contract, like uh, set, uh, set X uh, to three, set X to 20, uh, the miners and the validators will do exactly the same operations in the same order and we're fine. We will get the consistent state. We know the story. You recall us yesterday what was total order broadcast consensus blockchain and so on. So this is all, all in this line. And actually what uh, we would like to have is uh, this a parallel execution. So meaning that the, mi uh, the minor and validators might be using uh, several threads at the same time and perform the, 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 the execute the transaction uh, actions uh, in uh, any other, not arbitrary order, but in, 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 in parallel. Uh, the problem, obviously, uh, you know what it is. Uh, the set three and set 20, they might uh, uh, commute. And then uh, the challenge will be, uh, uh, what's the expected benefit? We will improve the blockchain throughput, obviously. The latency, I'm not that clear about whether we improve it or not. I, I, I wouldn't uh, beat on that. Uh, uh, how leveraging the multiple available cores on, on miners and validators, but the challenge is how do we ensure the consistency of the blockchain despite this parallel execution. So there are not so many papers discussing this. These are a few. There are, there are, there are some more, but I listed the more important ones. Uh, they are here ordered by date, not by the conference. This one has no conference be because also it's a very interesting paper by Early. Uh, from what I saw, it just appeared as a DAX tool report so far. There is a core report in the DAX tool report, but it's not published. It's not really published. And we, we learn. The DAX tool is not this. It's not this because this publishes the DAX tool now. Ah. <laughs> The, my, my, might be, might be, might be, might uh, be the no, case. So I will quickly, so the goal of my presentation is, 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 is to tell you quickly what, what these papers propose, uh, structuring the ideas a bit more than this, this list. Uh, we have the following research ideas that have been produced so far. Uh, speculative concurrent execution using STM-like techniques. This is one area of work. Then there is another area of work, is leveraging static analysis to a priori detect conflict. Okay, so it's no longer a speculative. You will execute something that you know will produce something consistent. Then there is this, what I call multi-future prediction. This is this, this last paper that appeared at SOSP uh, just this year, Forerunner paper. So a uh, very complex, very interesting system, but uh, probably uh, over-engineered a bit, I would say. <laughs> Uh, as many uh, SOSP papers. And uh, I'm not saying that because I don't have one, but just uh, because I <laughs> it's often the case. And then th there are papers discussing off-chain executions, which I don't uh, list here because this is uh, uh, some how d a different model. So, okay, basically, they would say, okay, let's assume that uh, smart contracts will be executed somewhere else and the blockchain is just here to, uh, to manage uh, their execution at high level, but I mean, they are not really part of the blockchain, so I, I don't cover them. If we want to follow that path, then we, they, they, they might be of interest. So the best, uh, I would say best piece of interest is basically the story of the blockchain. Yes, yes, you, 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 you could spawn uh, some sub, some sub chains with the goal to, uh, Th 
B basically, what what they uh, <laughs> basically what they would do this uh, this system is uh, a typical thing is. Uh, is they would use the blockchain to kind of agree on, uh, let's execute this contract, let's maybe agree on, on the output, but you know, the main blockchain will be used to, 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 to perform this agreement. Okay, we agree that the output of this smart contract is that one, rather than really executing the smart contract within the blockchain and having the smart contract modify, update the, stain, the state of the blockchain. So the execute order yeah, basically, they will, they will distinguish, they will uh, separate agreement and execution, as was done uh, 20 years ago in the consensus world, they would kind of apply this high-level idea to, to, to smart contracts. Just one question. Yes. Sensitive, uh, static analysis? So we, I, I, will, I, will, I will go back to each one very quickly, but just to present you the, this, these ideas. So speculative concurrent execution using STM, so the, the operating principles, so there are several papers, but the, 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 the operating principle, if you read this POTC paper, uh, you, you will get it. So it, it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. So miners will execute transactions concurrently, and they will use uh, STM techniques to detect conflicts between transactions at runtime. Okay, so you, you, I assume you're familiar with, with the STMs. I, I, I mean, if you're not, I mean, the, the STM techniques allow uh, uh, pinpointing the, 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 the memory addresses that are accessed, either in read or write modes. And so at runtime, you're able, if you, when you have a, uh, an STM runtime, you're able to say this memory address has been accessed by a set of transactions, more than one transaction, and, and, and at least one was of write. If these are reads, obviously, this, this is not a big issue. So th this is something that, I mean, uh, those of you who made <laughs> A PhD at EPFL in distributed programming uh, <laughs> know, know a lot. Uh, Rashid was working a, a lot on this topic during years, and okay. And so, what what does uh, what does happen to f to transactions that access the same um, portion of memory? So th th these transactions they f they uh, they fail and they are rollbacked. And so I it's really like uh, the, the, the 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 database world where. Uh, either you commit or you roll back a transaction and then you re-execute it. Uh, the thing is that once this has been done, uh, recall that this execution should be then reproduced by validators. So this means that you cannot then say, okay, validators also have an STM-like uh, runtime and they will uh, execute the transactions because they need to end up with the same state than the miners. So this means that miners, once they have executed speculatively the transactions using this STM-like runtime, they will generate a, a, a serializable concurrent schedule, okay? They will produce a schedule that they will embed in the block. They tell you how you should do it. They tell you how you should do it, exactly. And they embed this in the block, which is part of the discussion of people saying, this cannot be integrated, for instance, within Ethereum without doing a fork of the blockchain, because the blockchain currently is not Designed is not architecture to 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 to, to get this. Uh, yes, <laughs> so I didn't want to enter within the, you know the, the the debate Ethereum or not, but uh, yes. So they generate a, a new schedule, and uh, d this this is a kind of happens before graph. You understand why? Okay, this transaction should happen before that one, that should happen, happen before that one, and so on, and so on. Uh, again, so happens before, I mean, the Lamport relationship that uh, we, uh, we, we, we know. And so the validators, they will execute the transactions according to this graph. And uh, the thing is, uh, so a block is accepted by validators. If the uh, miners propose the correct happens before graph, so no data conflicts during the replay. So they are replaying and they observe that the, I mean, the, the, the transactions that are executed in parallel do not access the same part of the, of the memory. And uh, there are no differences between the proposed final state and the obtained state. Uh, and they uh, perform a, a performance evaluation uh, within this paper, but using a Java prototype. Why? Because obviously you don't have a, um, 
uh, Ethereum virtual machine supporting uh, 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 STM-like uh, runtime and so on. So, so they basically they emulate to see the, 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 the throughput gain they, they might observe. Uh, Just out of curiosity, how big is that graph? And how, how is it? I mean, it is. It's at a, it's a granularity of, of, of a block. The transactions that are within a block should be yeah, represented as a graph. Well, one node in a graph is a transaction. So you basically just show which transactions are committed. Yes, yes, I, I would say yes. I, 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 we would need to be okay. This would need to be checked because you might have this at the granularity of, of operations yeah, within transactions, yeah, yeah. but that would be huge. So I, I assume it's at the uh, granularity of the transaction. Yeah, we would need to yeah. confirm that. So you, you don't verify it, just that when you execute it, if you don't access the same portion of the memory, this means like that there is no problem. Front running is super simple, in the sense that if I have a conflicting uh, transaction, right? If I, there's a conflict in some address, I can like shift, shift the graph so that the one that I'm interested in yes. executes in that memory before and I take out the conflicting one. Yes. So do I, are they addressing that at all? Like the I mean, fact that the miner, because the miner so the, the, the miners graph. they execute, okay? They they, they, they build the graph. okay, so and they build the graph. So that graph should yield then an execution by validators, during which yes. validators will not create this uh, weird uh, thing where two transactions access the same yes. portion of so the state. Yes. I they, they first they check and they need to obtain the same, uh, the same final yes. state, which they know. It's up to the miner how they resolve the conflict. So the validator will check that there's no conflict. Yeah. Yes. But the miner can have the policy they want ah. yeah. to resolve the conflict, which means that I can do the graph that I don't know benefits the users that I want. Anyway, ah yes yes yes. Right, right. Even the sequential execution is then the swap. Yes. 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 That's my point. Yes. Like they, they, the miners they decide running. what the graph will be. Okay, but so yes. th they don't address front running. In no, 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 no. Just no, no yeah. But as said yesterday, I think front running is a fundamentally different problem. No, no. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. No, no. They don't address front running. Yeah. No, no. The, the question. Yeah. No, no. They just address conflicts. And yeah, you're perfectly right. Yeah, but like probably you can address. I don't know. Well, somebody needs to decide about the execution. The whole, uh, or the whole point of the thing is to decide. Yes. The and that, that entity that decides can always choose the order. Yeah, because I mean, it's also it's like fair order in the protocol where you need to be sure that if everyone receives one transaction before the other, then it will be transporting the block. But that's like, like that's super hard to do. And, the, and now you have this new protocol right. that tries to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 you, but you need yeah, because to maybe you, you have a verifiable graph, but, yeah. but like a graph is done just by one. So just to let you know, there is another paper discussing this STM-based uh, strategy to parallelize the execution of smart contracts. It appeared at Euromicro PDP 2019, which is not a very prestigious conference, but anyway. Uh, the main differences are the following ones. Uh, miners are no longer using relaying on, on, on locks. Uh, okay, so it's more optimistic uh, speculative execution at miners. Uh, failed transactions are then not rolled back, but they are retried in an infinite loop until all succeed. Uh, so no need for the inverse log or rollbacks that are used in the other approach. And the uh, puns before graph is replaced by uh, what they call a block uh, graph. Uh, and and the, 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 uh, the validators, the, the threads, which are called workers, they extract and execute transactions from these block graphs and they just ensure that what they call the topological order 
is, is, is enforced. So basically, they, 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 they get a graph. As you were saying, you, know, you were saying I have this, this uh, architecture where, where I have a pool of, uh, of threads, basically, that, that would pick you know, uh, events to be executed. They will pick transactions to execute, and they will just make sure using the graph that they, they, they enforce the order that the graph has, has encoded. But this is very similar. Uh, so the same ideas, and you would get the same kind of, of gains, uh, performance gains. OK, that's one part of the work, so speculative execution by miners, and then validators reproduce what miners did and, and leverage uh, things. So just to let you know, Marco, I just said that there is another paper discussing this with marginal differences uh, in the way. Sorry? Why is this not a solution? Yeah. This might be a solution. This might. No, no. I will, uh, I will go to my conclusions at the end, but I mean, wh why not? I mean, uh, then th this is not a solution. Leveraging static analysis to appropriately detect conflicting transactions. So the, the operating principle, again, uh, if you want to know it, you read that coordination 2020 paper. Uh, so the idea is to use static conflict analysis to approximately detect data conflicts between transactions. Why? Because you're never sure that what you guess will be a conflict is, a, is an actual conflict, OK? Uh, and you generate a concurrent execution schedule. So we are no longer speculative. We analyze the code when they this, 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 this commute, and, and, and you generate the schedule that will be used. So for instance, we are the transaction level, to reply to your, your previous question. In this work, we are, this I'm sure. So you have transactions. You have the read and the write set of every transaction. So uh, here we, we see that tx1 and tx2 uh, should precede uh, tx3 because they, they read or, or, or write uh, x and y, which is the case of the tree thing, and tx4 should be before tx5, but there is no relationship between the others. So the, 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 this is done via yeah, static analysis, and the validators and the miners can use this to uh, execute in parallel the, the transactions while still getting a, a, a consistent state. The problem is, why is the solution currently? is that static analysis, so I'm not at all an expert in static analysis, you don't ask me questions, uh, huh? is not, when I say it's not efficient, it means does not work on languages, you can remove the smart contract on languages that are quasi Turing complete, plus that allow untyped references, which is the case of solidity. Why? Because you have this kind of things that, that are, let's say, uh, <laughs> hidden in your code, in your transactions, and so you don't know whether you, you have a conflict, a, a static, I mean, a, a, a memory access conflict between transactions. And basically, so solidity uh, uh, written uh, smart contracts cannot be statically analyzed. Uh, so this is what I'm saying. It's not. It's not. A, it's currently not a solution. Uh, and uh, it's not a solution, but. So static analysis is not adequate for contracts with any solidity. But a remark, if you take Solana and its C-level uh, part, it actually uses a kind of, uh, let's say, uh, static analysis. How does it work? So transactions specify an instruction vector. This is the name they use. Each instruction contains the program, the program instruction, and a list of the accounts that the transactions want to read or write. So they make the uh, they, they say that it's like in um, operating uh, operating system uh, APIs where you can sometimes uh, uh, specify using a data structure this this and this. So this is exactly what they do, and so they work at the granularity of accounts, and you need to specify the accounts that will be accessed by every transaction, and this allows the VM to schedule the non-overlapping transactions in parallel. This also allows for uh, optimization of the execution using uh, uh, um, particular processors, uh, uh, SIMD processors, and so on and so on. I mean, they, they explain how they can leverage this information to, to get better performance uh, there. So th that's kind of Stroman design, but why not? I mean, if, if, you're, willing the, if you're willing to pay the price of, 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 of asking the, the developer to mention that if, 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 if he has access to this information. I mean, you can embed this kind of information within your language, and you will get uh, uh, more parallelism. If we don't, can that actually be inferred using from static analysis? 
you, you, you need a language that allows this. So you need your language to be designed properly. So you need to, 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 to design a domain-specific language, DSL, as we say, in which you will have the constructs that then will be uh, easily analyzed. Okay. For instance, EVM, EVM, there is a static analyzer for uh, Ethereum code, a part of it. It's so slow that you cannot uh, use it, they say, and it's, it would take uh, a yeah, but, uh, ages. But uh, once you have the notion of an account, yes, yes, yes. you need to be able to express it somehow. That means you must be able to write a tool that speaks yes. before submitting the transaction. Yeah. You will just need a language that is not uh, Turing complete. That in which everything is typed, so this is what an account is precisely. It's typed with uh, operations that are typed, meaning that they cannot manipulate accounts without uh, ex explicitly, you know, mentioning the fact that they are manipulating accounts. But once you have this, yes, yes, you can. The thing is that, from what I understand, within the the project, the PL project, the language is given. It's a wasm. Uh, uh, at least this is a bytecode, WASM. WASM is not that of a language. I mean, there are several languages, but I'm not sure that the, the engineering team wants to, to have uh, only one language because precisely what they want to address, from what I understand, is the, the plurality of languages and say, okay, now we have a kind of, uh, as you were saying, it's uh, like the JVM, it's like yeah. a, a bytecode towards which you will. Uh, Yes. That are written yes. And read and written by transactions. We have a, J a gas tracer, right? So you, you, when you have the bytecode, you have to choose like the operation, what is the price of each of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe w in that analysis, we have a way of checking what is written. So if you have like the, the read and write operation, mm -hmm. you have how much they cost. Mm -hmm. In this analysis, that you have to do pa a pass over the, mm -hmm. the message. Maybe we can. So add we 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 need we need to check that. My last uh, slide is what's next, uh, precisely to discuss what of this thing we, 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 we should do. I mean, this is something we, we should discuss, uh, maybe this. So multi-future prediction. So there the operating principle of that uh, idea, you will find it in this SOSP paper. So th the idea is that one is to optimize this uh, dissemination consensus execution model. So the dissemination part is important. The idea is to say, there is a, a, a time between the, 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 the moment where a, tr a, tr a transaction is known because it's been produced by someone, I want to execute that transaction, and it is actually ordered by the blockchain and then executed. And within that time between dissemination and consensus, the idea is to optimize the future execution of this transaction. How do you uh, op op optimize it? Um, by doing, uh, 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 ta -ta -ta -ta, how do we call this uh, usually? Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I don't have the. So you generate an accelerated program. So meaning, uh, it's like you know when when you're analyzing a, a program and say, okay, I know that this. Uh, condition will always be true and so on. So you're printing part of the code and so on and so on. Basically, you do this. The thing is, the problem is you don't know at that time which transaction will be executed before which one. Because you know them, they are disseminated, but there is no consensus. And what we were discussing before, in which order will they be appended in a block, you don't know this. So you might have multi-future, meaning you know a set of possible transactions that might be included in, in a block, but the, the next miner who will win the consensus is not known yet. So it can do whatever it wants, okay? So this is why basically they say, okay, let's consider that we can have multiple possible futures, okay? So we, 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 we generate an accelerated program for this future, this future, this future, this future, this future, this future, this future and at runtime, they encode you, you, a set of constraints, okay, uh, when they produce this uh, multi-future. And at runtime, they are able to say, okay, now we see that we are in this future and not in this future, or in this future and not in this future, and so on. So, so yeah, yes, yes, I mean, so they, they, they adapt to the fact that there might be multiple futures and they need at, uh, at runtime then to be able to, you know, to, to, to take the right, the right future. And if they didn't 
guess the one of the, I mean, if the future that actually occurs had not been studied before, they will just uh, perform a one at a time execution, so cellular level execution. And who computes all the technology results? The nodes between the dissemination and consensus phase. The nodes, they know the, tr they know the transactions, they got them. They are waiting for the consensus to be reached. They have plenty of unused cores, at least they say so, and they leverage these unused available uh, CPU resources to generate a, 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 a growth. So the, the thing is, so traditional speculative execution has one execution context to deal with, whereas they have multiple execution contexts to, to, to deal with. And this is the overall architecture. Uh, so no, the, this, uh, let's, let's not uh, consider this. Okay, this is what, what would, so you have the, the future context, so there are multiple futures that can occur depending on which transaction will be uh, ordered before which one in the next block that will be produced. Uh, so they, they produce some context, they, they do some prediction of what the next block will be, okay, that might be this one, this one, this one, this one. They perform uh, program specialization, they use memorization techniques, you know, to cache the results and not uh, uh, perform memory accesses. And, uh, uh. This generates accelerate, accelerated programs, AP, okay, that, uh, that then will be at runtime used to accelerate the execution of the transactions. Okay, so what I'm saying is over engineered, it's, it's a bit complex for, you know, I mean, Plus, you need to indeed say that you have uh, plenty of CPUs to, to leverage here, yeah, which might not be the case, or you might use your CPUs to do something else. Yeah. Well, what I, what I can imagine, well, this because this intuitively seems to me that you would need to generate a huge number of, of predictions to yes. be able to pick one. Yes. But what I could imagine is that if the, if the node that is actually assembling the block takes that into account and in the, or in, at least in the owner's Yes. Try to the block in a yes. Way you won't have many many possible futures. If the miner is a, is a nice miner, you might have rules such that yes. you know what a possible future yes. uh, will be. And actually, they implement this on top of, of, of Ethereum virtual machine, so it's it's compatible with, and they show that they have some improvements and so on and so. On. So it is a very complex uh, system paper. I mean, it's very, I mean, this is not a toy that they, they did, but it's a... Uh, uh, so the nodes are the ones that, if you think I missed something, the nodes are the ones that compute the future context. Yes. But they have all of the state and the data required. Because like but they don't know in which order transactions will be placed in a block. Right, but they may not have even like all the transactions. No, yes, exactly. They, they don't have even all okay, the transactions. Okay, so so they, they compute the future according to the transactions yes. that they've seen in their mempool? Exactly. Ah, okay. And this is why they compute multiple futures, okay. but they might not have or the actual... Yeah, yeah, yes, but, but yes. Yes, and what Matej was saying is that if you have some rules on how miners integrate transactions within a block, okay, it, it, it might be possible to say the future should be that one if you know all transactions okay. and so on and so on. Yeah, you so you if you are missing some transaction, there is but no way to guess the, the future. You merge then future contexts, right? Yes. I may have like one set of transactions and you may yes. have another number. But uh, this is based on the idea that before doing that, you will know all transactions that should be in the next block. And not mean uh, you, you, should know more, you should not know more, you should not know less, <laughs> you should know the exact <laughs> numbers <laughs> of transactions yeah. and you should know these transactions. Uh, yeah. Message pools, Yes, that's, uh, no, no, I mean, uh, you know. Uh, I, can I can imagine if, if, if you have a big pool and then you say, okay, probably the oldest end transaction, everybody already knows them by now, and this will be the... Or, or even minor, that they have, like, they're interested in having as much of information as possible for the new block, the message pool, but nodes, like, they have no incentive on having yeah, large it's message pools. I, I think it's worth only... It's what I call an over-engineered uh, work, but it's, I mean, between Solana, which is very basic, where basically uh, you declare, and uh, yes, based on declaration, we are all able to do uh, an even base runtime that will pick transaction and, and 
in parallel, uh, and execute in parallel those that do not access the same state. And this, there is a huge gap. Okay? This is a, these are many months uh, of work and so on. What should we conclude on all these research ideas? Uh, there is something nice to, 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 to draw a conclusion. This is this paper by Erli, this 2019 paper. Because basically it answers the following question, which performance gain can, we, can be expected, can we expect? And the idea is the following one. It uses uh, historical data from uh, Ethereum and uh, it, it, it tries to estimate the potential benef benefit of speculative execution. So speculative execution means executing in parallel. I should have written parallel execution, but executing in parallel the smart contracts. And so uh, they assume the following execution model. Okay, They say we have two phases. One is the concurrent phase where the virtual machine will execute smart contracts in parallel. It will track the read and writes of each transaction. It will intercept and buffer the writes. And so two transactions conflict if they access the same memory location and one at least is a write. And in a second phase, all trans conflicting transactions are replayed in a one at a time order. So they take the transaction of a block, of an Ethereum block, so they look at historical data, they take a block, they try to execute all transactions on, in, in parallel. A, a, a set of them work, meaning they, they commuted, they didn't access the same state, okay. The other one that failed, they re-execute re them in parallel. And they are looking at the time it takes to execute this rather than executing all transactions uh, in a serializable uh, manner. This, they cannot perform this uh, study on all uh, blocks. There are too many blocks, too many transactions. It would have uh, taken uh, to far too many times. So they take transactions occurring from 2016 to, to December 2017. And so this is the number of transactions per day on, on Ethereum. We, we, we can discuss this, this, this jump here. And they studied each time a, a window of one week of transactions. And on this one week of transactions, they execute one tenth of the uh, of these transactions, okay, just to decrease the size of the, the, the data they are actually uh, uh, processing. This is the crypto kitties <laughs> thing. It's important because it's it's something that that is uh, often uh, mentioned in papers. This might uh, induce uh, bias in the way you you interpret data and so on and so on. Okay, so crypto kitties was a smart contract token-like smart contract. Uh, and uh, so you, uh, huge interest, many transactions, and obviously many conflicts. Because, uh, because like the parallelization cannot be done between functions in the smart contract? They, 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 it could, it could, it could. It, and that's one, that's, well, that's one possibility that I mentioned at the end. It's to do, for instance, uh, conflict-free replicated data types mm -hmm. to implement smart contracts. So CRDTs, conflictly replicated data types, these are data structures that uh, by design commute. And for instance, what is said is that accounts, uh, uh, credit and debit operations in account, which is something that blockchains are uh, used a lot for, uh, are the typical kind of objects for which you can, you can design operations that commute when you don't have overflow or uh, uh, the account. I, I was thinking about the same with the NFT. Yes. Like yes. The Yes. Yes. Unless, like, you have a map. Yes. I don't know how they. So, 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 no, no, no. You can. You, 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 you. I mean, you can parallelize at any granularity. Just, we need to decide the path we want to follow. And this is milestone two, which. Uh, so, the last slide we 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 di we discuss. So, but what is interesting in this? Which performance? Gain? So, these are the the number of transactions, the number of blocks on these seven intervals that they studied. Just for you to to have this, if you want. And that's the performance gain, and, and interestingly, or, or I, I mean, uh, or let's say it might be seen as a problem, this is the speed up on the y-axis. These are the seven periods of time that have been studied, and what we see is that the speed up decreases over time. I mean, there are more and more conflicting transactions as time. Uh, so, so this is the CryptoKitties case, but even 
even here, the, this was already the case that the, the speed up was, was decreasing. These three lines are for the number of cores that are being used to execute transactions, obviously. This change, I mean, the, the, the conflicting transactions, the number of uh, conflicting transactions depend on the number of cores. I mean, the number of cores will uh, decide how many transactions are actually executed in parallel and not. Uh, uh, hey, yes. Yes. Not like how many of them are not conflicting. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. No, no, ex no, no, exactly. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, yes. That was, that was my question, like how does it? Yeah, that, that's, the, that's, the f that's the funny story. And so uh, having a larger number of cores is, is better, but there is a point after which I will uh, list the lessons learned. Uh, they say after like uh, 64 cores, they, they didn't observe any benefit in, that, in increasing number of cores, at least on, their, on, on the data they studied. And so this is the conflict rate, the percentage of conflicts that they observe. So the, the conflict rate increases and the performance gain decreases. Yes. We both have questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm curious about the conflict rate, right? Because you said, well, CryptoKitties, obviously everyone was transacting on basically the same contract, yes. so you had a lot of conflicts. But if this is not all CryptoKitties, that was like, what, five, right? Or that, that was uh, seven. Oh, it's seven. Okay. It's yeah. seven. No, no, he, crypto kitty is this seven one. So it, it was, okay. these are the seven periods yeah. and this is the, the crypto kitty. Okay. This is also why we observe a much higher number of transactions yeah. and, and so on and so on. Okay. So this is, all this is crypto. It's a very, it's a very interesting to see the data after. Yeah. So what's speed up? That's an exit or something. The, the speed up is, is, is what they gain by having these two phases. Okay. One. Ah, it, uh, the y-axis? Uh, uh, so what is latency or what? No, no it's, uh, it's, uh, it's execution time. So it's throughput. Yeah. But throughput, so blocks come in Ethereum, they come. So, so you have a block. It's the time to execute transactions within a block. A speed up of two is it took uh, five seconds rather than 10 seconds. So you. So Yes, yes. So it's, it's the speed up of uh, the execution of uh, transactions within a block. So I have a block to re-execute or to execute. It's what's the performance gain I, I can observe if I have um, multiple threads, I mean concurrent execution. But uh, assume you deploy the solution. Yes. It change much because it's not a bundle. I mean, I, w w when you validate a posteriori, for instance, you, uh, you have all the blocks. And you need to validate the chain again. Up, yeah. yeah, you catch up, and there you, you will gain a lot. But uh, otherwise, yes, there, there are other ways to optimize the throughput. Consensus, uh, faster consensus is one. <laughs> Larger blocks is one. Hey. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. 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 Um, this this is number of, of conflicts per address. So th this here is, is so. Uh, how many conflicts do we see uh, and how many uh, addresses? So we see that m most addresses have very uh, little conflict and you have hotspots. So you have some contracts that will yield very, very, very uh, large number of, 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 of conflicts. So, very so these are the so-called hotspots, these crypto kitties and so on and so on. And they perform an experiment where they remove this, this hotspot contract and obviously the concurrency is, is better. I mean, and the, 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 the time, the speed, up is, uh, the speed up is improved. Okay, so that's also a possibility. Uh, for instance, with the subchains and so on to kind of redirect the, you know, the very popular, uh, the, the hotspots and some subchains and have some uh, subchains that don't have hotspots or things like that. I mean, everything is open. I mean, so. Uh, well, but then if, you, if, if many operations conflict with that, that and such other transactions, then you would have cross subchains. Yeah, I mean, this, this needs to be carefully. Uh, but I mean, just to say that these hotspots 
have, have, have a huge impact on, on this study. So what are the lessons learned from the paper? Over time, speedups decline as transaction traffic increase. This is what we, we've seen with this, this slope. They show that it's important to distinguish between reads and writes, obviously. Uh, you know uh, that reads commute, writes do not. And uh, they, they perform two experiments, one in which they would just consider that uh, if they touch the same memory address, uh, uh, they conflict, and one in which they will distinguish uh, writes and reads. And obviously, uh, you, you it's just to say, yes, there is some uh, incentives in going uh, deeper in the uh, possible analysis and really understanding what are writes and what are reads. Um, they also studied an another strategy where they have multiple concurrent phases. So one first concurrent phase, okay, you have a set of transactions that worked, perfect. Then you run again a second concurrent phase you retry, okay? And then at the end, you always have a, a serializable uh, execution of transactions that did not uh, make it in one of the previous phases. And they, they show that this didn't uh, yield a good benefit. Basically, uh, uh, the, the, the ones that did not, I mean, that induced conflict in the first uh, phase, they will induce conflicts everywhere, and, and you don't have uh, much benefit in trying to re-execute them in parallel. Uh, they show that uh, uh, accurate static conflict analysis yield a modest benefit. So why, actually? Uh, uh, just because um, what this means is that executing transactions that conflict is not a big issue. You don't get much in not executing them in parallel. Okay? You, waste, you wasted some time in executing in parallel transactions that did not conflict, but not that much is not a, a big factor. So they basically don't spend time trying to static analyze, do a runtime that allows for concurrent execution, uh, be able at runtime to, to detect the conflict, roll back the transactions that should be rolled back, re-execute re them and so on and so on, but don't spend your time trying to generate a good schedule a priori. Be optimistic. That's, that's the idea. But the static analysis in a way probably works Yes, and it's a conservative approach, and you don't gain much. It avoids conflicts, but this conflict is not actually what uh, slows down the thing. Okay, uh, I mean, the thing is, the a system is efficient when when you can execute things in parallel, and even if you have conflicts and so on, you have executed many things in parallel, and you got the 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 the, the, the benefit. So the static analysis part will avoid some conflicts, but not much and the gain will not be uh, much better. I'm clear or not? Yeah, you, you, you understand the, the thing? I, I mean... I have a question about SVN, but it's a very yes. question. Can I ask now? Or? Yes, yes, yes. So if the, if the miner produces this schedule, yes. and he sends one schedule to me and one schedule to the other schedule to... Yes, so the, the schedule is in the blockchain. It's so part of the blockchain state. Sorry? Still in the proposal. It's in the block that the miner proposes. Yes. So, aha, you mean because it is a different schedule, then it's a different block? It's a different block. Well, it pays the forecast, no? Yes. So it's a miner, it's a Byzantine miner, it's producing two different blocks. Yes. The two blocks cannot win. I mean, one will win over the other. So you still need a majority of, of, of validators to. Yes. I, I guess. I mean, that, uh, otherwise, I don't see how this would work. But at the end, this is part of the block, so you only have one schedule that will be the. You have a winning schedule. I mean, uh, you agree on the schedule. You yeah. agree on the schedule. Yeah. It should be part of the thing. Plus the. But this is not possible to apply with near and far blocks. Like you cannot exit because this assumes the decision before loading. Let, 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 let me just finish. Have one slide, and we discuss. No, 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 no problem. Just, just, just that. Uh, so, uh, increasing the number of cores uh, uh, improves the performance, but uh, more than 64 was not useful. And uh, in high contention periods, most contention resulted from a very small number of popular contracts, also known as hotspots, uh, typically the CryptoTTs. And this is why I interrupted you, Marco, because what's next? So now we can discuss. Uh, 
So speculative execution, we have four choices. Declare conflict. This requires an appropriate language, okay, to declare conflict. Sure. Detect conflicts requires runtime instrumentation. Okay, we need to be able to. Statically analyze the code requires also an appropriate language to be able to analyze it. Use commutative data types, okay, so to produce, this was your remark, uh, contracts uh, that, that, have, that use operations that commit, like, like to manipulate credit debit operations so and accounts. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, STM is, uh, is, is here. Solana is here. Yeah. STM is here. There is something else. We might want to implement a mechanism to enable disable spe speculative execution. So that's something that basically, why should it be by design? I mean, if you see that it's not your periods of time where you have hotspots and so on, an idea might be if you don't put hotspots within a subchain, so there, it's to just see, observe that the performance is not uh, better with speculative execution. You just that's easy, no? yes, that's 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 easy. You just need to be included in the runtime design, I believe, because it's not difficult to do, and I think you can you can gain a lot. You, it's like a, <laughs> a seven hundred where you have you had these multiple things, eh? and you should not consider that uh, by design speculative execution should be enforced. Maybe you will end up with cases where it should not be, and okay, you should just be able to skip it. Can so, can this be dynamic? Because I'm thinking, <laughs> this reminded me of, of V8, like the, the VM from JavaScript. It does a first just in time compilation yes. of the code, mm -hmm. and then it does the, the more like deep compilation so that mm -hmm. you can start mm -hmm. fast and then like mm -hmm. have the, the efficient compilation. Could this be the case? Like, have a first pass over transactions alive, uh, just in time compilation to detect some conflict, and then if you see that it's not a hot, uh, like a hotspot, do a more uh, or like take only the transactions that are in the hotspot. I don't know if that's possible, but I think like that means that you you, you 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 are in the static analysis. Uh, you you seem to like the static analysis the case uh, where you analyze no, transactions. No, because I think that compilers are already doing a lot of this work. And yes. We, we need the, the, thing is, the, the thing is, this is what is interesting from the previous paper, is I'm not sure that we gain a lot from uh, knowing which one will actually uh, yield conflicts. What they show is that uh, if you know this, you will uh, extract this transaction, so you won't put them in the concurrent phase, but what you will gain from doing this is not that high. So that means that if you spend time, if you spend resources trying to detect for at the end gaining 5%, it's, um, this needs to be carefully designed. Really? Sometimes the... But it's specific for Ethereum, no? Yes, and how they handle... Yeah. My next question is how they handle... Yes, but the Ethereum is kind of, I mean, uh, it's probably yeah. very close to what we will have. Yeah. And, yes, do they and, and plus, so what I didn't say, sorry, sorry for that. They, no, no, no. We don't have, we don't have uh, uh, multi-threaded Ethereum uh, VMs and so on. So this study is based on, so how, how do they estimate the time? It's an approximation. Two things, gas estimation, number of operations, and they show that the two yield the same uh, graphs. Not exactly the same, because there is no one-one uh, mapping between the gas cost that will be uh, and, and operations. Okay, it's, it's very close. So they show that it's close actually. But you know, this is the way they emulate this time uh, measurement, let's say. They perform the time measurement that they. And STM doesn't tell faults now in the implemented fault code, it's not fault code. Like STMs? Like blaming the. No, because, no, no, because you, you, you know what memory portions have been accessed in an STM. Otherwise, uh, all STM uh, story would be broken, you know. That's b by design, the runtime, this is why I'm saying you need an appropriate runtime. The runtime needs to be instrumented because by design, you need to be able to, to say these transactions, they conflicted. They access the same. Uh, so you, you, you have the read and writes that are, that, that are pinpointed. And, and the writes are buffered. They can only be applied uh, at commit time. Do they consider 
calls because you, you can have like transactions to your from a uh, smart contract to another smart contract. Yes. Which can make it because you you have like, like the the transaction and you mm. know the the addresses that it touches and mm. like the the logic that it runs. But if this triggers another internal transaction, do they? Like this in any way or, or no, the, pa the paper are really doing a, a static analysis. It considers that uh, Ethereum is not existing, basically. And it's saying, okay, let's design, a, 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 a let, let's propose a theory of uh, smart contract execution. Okay? okay. And so uh, they show that uh, ERC token, blah, 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 could be, uh, uh, could follow this uh, uh, theoretical. Uh, design, but they are really saying, okay, we have a, 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 a theory of, of, of the concurrency of the distributed object concurrency. We should do, we should have the same for smart contracts to be able to say this, 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 uh, but they are not at the level of, uh, you know, uh, saying uh, we have transactions within transactions, we have other transactions, blah, 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 blah. That's, uh, and if we go for static analysis, for me, we will, we'll go at the Solana level, like, uh, Assuming the, I mean, very coarse graining granularity, accounts, uh, something like that. I mean, otherwise, it's just a uh, waste of time. Plus, we don't have static analysis experts, so we might uh, hire. That's one part of the job, by the way, is to uh, know which uh, staffing <laughs> would be needed uh, at the end for productizing this. But, uh, yeah. but yes, uh, uh, what seems the, the most appropriate to me is uh, detecting conflicts and uh, at runtime. Then if there is a very simple compilation uh, plus strategy to guess, we can try to leverage that information, but we should not say this is uh, the a priori. Uh, this sh for me, this wouldn't be the first uh, idea. That one really, the, the CRDT is, is appealing, but it, it really requires, it's another model. It's, a, it's another language. I mean, it's a... What's the most prominent idea? Sorry? What's the most prominent idea? For, for, for me, it would be uh, detecting conflict. That would, that would be also the first thing I... Or the declarative, the Solana, the Solana approach is very is straightforward. Yeah. Okay, you declare. Based on this coarse grain granularity, you execute. And, and if the, 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 the declaration was badly done by the developers, you penalize them. So how would you execute this multiple? So that, that, that's where we need you in, sorry, to certain extent, we need you in one block twice around at a time. Mm. So when you do FTM conflict detection, you need to have the state on which you're going to execute. Have multiple blocks at the same time. This means that these multiple blocks become your context, your new context. I mean, you, you don't do things at the granularity of a block, but at a set of blocks. But how would that work? That's. Uh, you have a question about That's the question related to MIR BFT, I believe. You have multiple. Static analysis. Well, I think what 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 even Fabric has in the, in the in the other model is a execute or the validate model. Then, actually, I really I don't really like the distinction between post order execution and execute order validate because I think it just ex execute order validate is just a special case of post order execution. Like 
the, if, you, if you define your application to be only the, val the validation is actually the execution. And, the, and the, in the execute order validate model, it's just that you restrict the kind of transactions you, you're able to execute and the execution of the validation. But uh, may, maybe here, if, if, the, if actually the, the client or the, 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 whoever prepares the transaction knows an approximate state, and then, then we, we we're coming closer to the declare and the declare is wrong. And it doesn't necessarily need to be put into the program it doesn't. I, I can ima easily imagine tools that might be arbitrarily complex, but that's for off the critical path that actually figure that out and then you only submit a transaction that, that or already has all the metadata like that. But still, I'm, I'm proposing block number one and you're proposing block number five and your block comes before mine. But then there's not block number one and block number five. Then these are just concurrent numberless blocks. So how could we work then? No. I hope you mean the, the leaders. Yes. The so here the assumption. Ah, okay, so okay, here okay, the okay, interface, yeah. interface is go. You take near BFT, but before the leader proposes needs to do something, it needs to run the STM conflict detection first while it assembles the block. So it, it configures the block in a certain way. It manipulates it because it, it adds the recipe to ah, others so how they're going to execute, and while it's doing that, it needs to rely on the state to figure it out. But you don't ah, know no, that, that no, I, 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 I didn't know you were talking about adding the state. Uh, it has the state to which it will uh, open the block. What, what, what? Yeah, I mean, this block that it is producing yes. will be at, uh, appended to, to something. How it knows it works, to work. It doesn't work. So you, you get the transactions, you pack them in a block, yeah, you ship them. Okay. You ship them. Yes. You don't look at the state because you are assuming that whoever gets this, you are just totally ordering. As you are totally ordering, somebody. Uh, it, need, it needs to question. access the state. Now, if you access the state, and this is the fifth block, where I do I get my fourth block? I don't get it from nowhere because. You, know, you just don't know the state. It of might be a normal in the end block. Yeah. But to apply this, you should know it. <laughs>